Hi there, this is Leah from Mommyish, and today I have a tutorial on how to use the new glass tile styles to create new elements for your scrapbook pages. So what I have here is a layout that I've been working on. This is with my templated trio number 12, and it has apple pie, which is absolutely delicious. And I have a little um, journaling that song lyrics from the movie Michael. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's John Travolta and he's an angel. Anyway, there's a song in it, Pie, and I just thought it was perfect. <laughs> so while I was looking through the shop, I found these really great fall stamps from Amber Laveau. And as you see here, I've already made a little element, but I'm going to show you how I did that. But she has this cute little pie, and I thought it would be so perfect to add into this layout. So what I'm going to do and how we're going to do this, you're going to load your styles. I have mine loaded right here and I'm going to copy. So control A, control C, that's just getting all copying it and just pasting it into this new document or not a new document, but into our layout document. Now, don't be afraid to work inside your layout. There's nothing, nothing scary here. All right. I'm going to show you what I do. You're going to be looking for elements that have strong, clean lines like you would see in something that's stained glass. For example, these doodles are really great. They're doodled, but they're still very clean, and that's what we need for um, to do this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the open areas that we would normally maybe color in. And I'm going to make sure I get those little cute bits right here, two and three. So that's your first step. You're going to select the area that we're going to color in. Then you're going to create a new layer. And also you're going to go to select, modify, and expand. And I like to do by one pixel, sometimes two. We'll do two for this one. And you'll see there what that does is it gives us our marching ant area where we're going to be flood filling in uh, color. So I think it, I'm going to use this blue color for the Pi 10, but, um, don't be afraid. We're keeping the marching ants active for now. Take your paint bucket tool and flood fill in with any color. It really doesn't matter. It'll flood fill in the entire area. Now, if you turn off the layer above it, you'll be able to see our little, our little pie area. If I deselect, you'll notice now that when I flood fill in, it's only going to flood fill in these separate areas. So, um, and I'm not going to worry about it getting jagged or anything else because the doodle is going to be on top of it to hide it. So here we have the pie tin. Then I'm just going to sample from the layout to get my pie colors. So this is going to be its, its little top. And then I want the crust to be the same tone, but a little darker, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn back on my doodle. There it is. And now all I have to do is apply style, just like that. And it turns into this little cool stained glassy sort of element. Now I'm going to use the letting style here. And I might play around with the bevel on this, make it a little smaller if I'd like, or larger. It just depends on what you want to do, really. I always like to play around with my styles, even after I've made them. I, uh, what can I say? I love them. So here we have our little cute pie element. Once I'm done with it, I'm happy with the way it looks. I'm going to merge those layers together. Now I can add a drop shadow to this layer with no issues. And drag him where I want him to be. Just like that. So we're going to do it again one more time so you can see, you know what, it'd be kind of cute if I had the little pie thing over here. We'll figure out where I'm going to put him later. For now, he's going to go right there. I'm going to get another stamp from Amber's set here. Let's go with comfort food because that's definitely comfort food, isn't it? I'm going to do again, control A, control C, and we're going to plop it back into this area. All right. This one isn't going to be quite as complex, but I'm going to show you, um, you know, just how I would do it. Now, with a layer like this one, what we want to do, again, to get that effect of each little section being glass, we have to make sure that each continuous area is its own um, fill area. So that's why I don't just select the outside and then inverse it because then it's going to just do an effect on the whole area without 
the little bevels where the the text is and I'm going to just show you what I mean because it kind of sounds confusing but it really really isn't all right so I have this layer selected I'm selecting on the outside and the quick way to flood fill this in would be just invert it maybe do a contract a little bit so let's go ahead select modify contract and we'll do by two pixels again I'm just going to create a layer underneath it and I'm going to flood fill it in with a color from the layout. Now that looks perfect, right? But whenever I apply the style to it, it's just one piece of glass. And if that's the effect that you're looking for, that's fine. But for me, I like getting those little individual beveled areas, right? Where it looks like the glass has been etched out each little piece. So how do we do that? Well, since I already did it like this, one way you can do it, I'm gonna turn off this um, fill layer here is select the black section of this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to contract this selection by one. One pixel, not two. I'm gonna make sure I have the under layer that I just filled in selected and then we're gonna hit delete. And do you see there what that did? Now it looks way cooler, right? Now it's not totally perfect because um, we did it in a, a I would say a, a shortcut-ish sort of way, but um, it looks pretty darn good, I think. So there we have our little comfort food element. Again, add your bevel. There's also a little grout style that you could use and you can fill that in with any other color. Like if I wanted to do maybe the brown, it might look pretty. So don't judge me for doing it this way. <laughs> I'm like quick and easy, here we go, just like that. And you can see there what that looks like. Sorry, I have it up in the upper corner, there you go. That's kind of fun, right? So that's it, that's how we're gonna make little um, stained glass elements for our layouts. Really fun, really easy, really, really easy. If I wanted to change the color for this, what I do is I just clip a layer above it and flood fill in different colors until I'm happy with with what I have. So if I wanted to do a red, I'm just picking out a red here, and fl filling that in and you can see there now it's red. If I wanted the green, I could go in there, pick out green, you see, just like that. Very easy squeezy and a lot of fun. You can do this with loads of elements that you may already have that are doodle type elements from your favorite designers. And this is a way to get a little bit more use out of them. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Have a great day and bye-bye.